In the shadows of colonial exploitation and the glare of racism, one woman's journey is considered by many as the embodiment of colonial exploitation, racism, and mockery. Sarah Bartman was taken to Europe in 1810 to be exhibited in human zoos. This is her story. But before we start, a quick message from our sponsor. Hey there, YouTube family. Before starting the video, I've got something special to share with you today. If you're a parent, guardian, or educator looking for an awesome way to educate your little ones about the rich history of Africa, then listen up. Our video today is proudly sponsored by My African Icons, a series of children's books dedicated to empower the next generation with stories that'll leave a lasting impact. My African Icons specializes in children's books about African history, culture, and achievements. The books are beautifully illustrated and written in a way that's both entertaining and educational. You'll find tales of great African leaders, innovators, and incredible historical events. These books are perfect for bedtime stories, classroom lessons, or just quality bonding time. And the best part? They're tailored to inspire your kids and boost their self-esteem. So, if you're ready to take your loved ones on an unforgettable journey through the vibrant history of Africa, get your copies of My African Icons and more today. Chapter 1 Origins Born around 1789 near the river in the Kamtabo Valley located in the eastern part of South Africa, Sarah Bartman, also known as Saki, was an African woman belonging to the Khoisan ethnic group. The Khoisan, also known as the Khoi Khoi, Khoi, or Koko people, are a group of indigenous people of southwestern Africa, primarily in South Africa and Namibia. The name Khoi Khoi means men of men or people of people, while Khoisan refers to the linguistic and genetic heritage of the Khoi Khoi and San people. Scientists consider them to be the oldest human beings on the planet. At some point they even represented the majority of the human beings on the planet. Her mother died when she was a child, but despite her circumstances, Sarah was described as independent and hardworking from a young age. When she was a young teenager, her father was also taken from her, having been killed while doing his job as a cattle driver. Orphaned, she went to Cape Town. During the 1800s, a free black trader named Peter Caesar came across her and later convinced her to move to Cape Town, which had recently come under British control. Although records state she was persuaded, given the situation at the time, it's more likely that Sarah was forced to go. She worked in Cape Town for two years, first as a nurse mate to Peter and later as a servant to a Dutch man. It was during this time that she would be renamed Sarki by her new Dutch employers, a diminutive form of her name in Dutch. She worked as a free woman but in conditions similar to those of a captive. She then settled in the house of Peter Caesar's brother, known as Hendrik Caesar, where she lived among the family's slaves. Despite not having the same social status, she likely had two children who died young and had a relationship with a Dutch soldier named Hendrik Van Jones. This relationship ended when his regiment relocated, breaking Sarah's heart. For years, she continued working as a servant and wet nurse until she made the acquaintance of a Scottish military surgeon named William Dunlop. Dunlop was a Scottish military surgeon who worked with various Cape slave organizations and provided individuals for 19th century human zoos. He suggested to Sarah Bartman to go to England to make money by performing in popular exotic themed shows of the time. Sarah initially refused, but she eventually agreed on the condition that her employer, Hendrik Kieser, accompanied her. Initially hesitant, he eventually agreed to go to England in 1810 to oversee the contracts and performances of the young Bartman. So, on April 7, 1810, the HMS Diadem set sail for London, and it is uncertain whether Sarah left willingly or was forced by the men. Supposedly, on October 29, 1810, Sarah signed a contract in which she agreed to work as a servant and exhibit herself for entertainment purposes. However, Sarah was illiterate and the contract was in English, so she was unable to read its contents. It's likely that she was forced to sign, and the lack of a copy meant the men exploiting her could modify the contract as they pleased. Despite the men's mistreatment, there were two benefits in the contract that gave Sarah hope. 
It stipulated that after five years, she could return to South Africa and receive a portion of the earnings from the show. Chapter 2, London Sarah arrived in London in November 1810. In London, she lived on Duke Street in the upscale St. James area. The original group consisted of Sarah Bartman, her employer Hendrik Caesar, Alexander Dunlop, and two African boys likely brought illegally by Dunlop from the Cape Slave Basin. Her prominently developed buttocks, inconspicuous in her home country, turned heads and raised curious eyebrows. This physical characteristic was and still is common among women of many African ethnicities, including the Khoisan to which Sarah belonged and was exhibited in the Egyptian Hall of Piccadilly Circus, at the price of ten pounds. The show presented Sarah in a cage, with William bringing her to the stage and Hendrick as the master of the ceremony. A few years earlier, in 1807, the Slave Trade Act had been passed, making the sale of slaves illegal. This exhibition created a scandal and ended up in court. The judges tried to determine whether Sarah acted of her own free will or was forced. No record indicates whether Sarah Bartman could express her thoughts or if she was coerced. After three hours of interrogation, the judges declared that Sarah Bartman exhibited of her own free will and received half of the total fee. That's when she was nicknamed the Hottentot Venus. The publicity from the legal sphere increased her and her show's popularity. She was then exhibited at a fair in Limerick, Ireland, in 1812, and in Bury St. Edmunds in Suffolk on December 1, 1811. Bartman was baptized in Manchester Cathedral and married on the same day, though the groom's identity remains unknown. Little is known about the years between 1812 and 1814, but by September 1814, Sarah was taken from England and transferred to France under the protection of a man named Henri Taylor who, due to her extraordinary curves, proposed her to several entrepreneurs. Chapter 3, Barbarism Taylor eventually sold Sarah to an animal trainer named S. Rowe. The French man exhibited her in Paris as if she were a circus animal. During this time, Sarah was essentially enslaved, living in terrible conditions and occasionally being presented almost naked in the shows. It lasted for about 15 months, at the Palais Royal in Paris, the French capital. So, far from Britain, Sarah had become a slave. She received visits from several French naturalists, including Georges Cuvier, chief keeper of the menagerie of the National Museum of Natural History, and was the subject of numerous atrocious scientific studies at the Jardin du Roy, where she was examined in March 1815. In reality, Bartman was not completely nude, although she appeared so. She wore a small apron-shaped garment that covered her genitalia throughout these sessions, allowing her to maintain a semblance of modesty in honor of her culture. Even when offered money to remove her veil, Sarah never completely undressed. After months of inhumane living conditions, Sarah Bartman died on December 29, 1815. She was only 26 years old, and the cause of death was identified as smallpox, but she may have died of syphilis, a sexually transmitted bacterial infection, or pneumonia, lung inflammation usually caused by a viral or bacterial infection. French scientists had treated Sarah literally like an animal. There is evidence suggesting that at some point, a leash was placed around her neck. Georges Cuvier, who had studied the young woman both alive and dead, published his observations in 1817 in the memoirs of the museum in an article entitled, Extract from Observations Made on the Body of a Woman Known in Paris and London as the Hottentot Venus. He noted in his monograph that Sarah was intelligent with an excellent memory. In addition to her native language, she spoke fluent Dutch, correct English, and some French. He described her shoulders and back as graceful, her arms as slender, and her hands and feet as charming and graceful. He added that she was skilled at playing the Jew's harp, knew how to dance according to her country's traditions, and had a lively personality. Despite his remarks about her intelligence, Georges Cuvier, part of a movement of scientists aiming to establish a hierarchy of races with white people at the top and black people at the bottom, 
So, later he gave an interpretation of Sarah's remains in line with his theories on racial evolution. Emphasizing what he found obvious of a monkey, he thought Sarah's small ears resembled those of an orangutan and also compared her liveliness when alive to the quickness of a monkey. Chapter 4, Motherland After her death, Georges Cuvier, who had studied the woman both alive and dead, removed her brain, genital organs, and entire skeleton from her body. Her body and skeleton were first exhibited from 1817 to 1878 at the Jardin de Plantes in the former Gallery of Comparative Anatomy, which Cuvier had opened to the public in 1806. They were transferred to the newly established Museum of Ethnography at the Trocadero in 1878, where they remained until the creation of the Museum of Man in Paris in 1937. Sarah's body and skeleton were then exhibited in this Parisian museum. Her story was rediscovered by the public in the 1980s with the release of Stephen J. Gould's book, The Hottentot Venus. After the triumph of anti-apartheid sentiment in the 1994 South African elections, this story was at the center of a discussion led by the renowned anti-apartheid activist Nelson Mandela. After being elected president of his country in 1994, he formally requested France to bring Sarah's remains back to her homeland to provide her with a proper burial and restore her dignity. Initially, these requests were denied by authorities and the French scientific community in the name of the state's inalienable heritage and science. However, later, a law was passed and France returned Sarah Bartman's remains to South Africa. Thus, in May 2002, she was solemnly welcomed in Cape Town. On August 9th of the same year, after a purification ceremony following her people's rites, she was buried on a hill in her hometown after 200 years of exile. I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like more content like this, please consider liking, sharing, and supporting our channel. Your support is crucial for the channel's growth. Now, on to Sarah Bartman. What's your take on her life? Do you realize that she was only 26 when she died? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching Mr. Imhotep's channel and see you in the next video.